folks, we are back live. I'm going to your phone calls and back in the news. By the way, there's another video in West Virginia that came out last week at a warrantless checkpoint. The particular one I was just talking about was Tennessee, uh, where the uh, deputies at the big checkpoint, you know, the guy didn't want his car searched. And so they just say, get your butt right over there, boy. And again, this is what corrupt countries always do. But see, now you're supposed to salute the police and actually bend over. And that was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And the Liberty Crier uh, is linking through to a mainstream news article and reporting that on top of it, the particular deputy reportedly lied about having insurance when he rear-ended someone in his pickup truck. The file shows. Video of the DUI checkpoint in Rutherford County, already viewed by millions of times online, was recorded by a member of the Libertarian Party and raises questions about drivers' rights at checkpoints. Uh, there's no questions. The Supreme Court, the state courts have all ruled that it's unconstitutional to have a warrantless checkpoint. You can have a checkpoint if there is a you know red pickup truck with a bank robber that matches a description believed to be going down Highway 10, and then they set it up looking for the red pickup. But now they use any excuse. Fireworks got sh shot off. We think it might be a firearm. We're locking down 800 homes and searching them without warrants. Totally illegal. We're looking for one kid uh, who we say is the bomber, uh, who they really wanted to get rid of. Look how many other witnesses they did in the Boston bombing. And then, boom, boom. They go and start searching everybody's houses without warrants. It's all a government orgy of power grab. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. This has happened over and over and over again. If common criminals could use the same excuses as the Obama administration, they would say, mistakes were made. What difference does it make? I know nothing. I did it for national security. I answered in the least untruthful manner possible. Yeah, the uh, head of the NSA, uh, General Alexander, came out last week and said, uh, I apologize um, to Congress. What I said was completely erroneous. When he said to Congress, in fact, I, I heard them do the, uh, play that on the nightly news last Friday. We ought to cue up that clip that I saw them cover. It was an article on InfoWars uh, as well. I, I think it was head of NSA admits to lying to Congress. But the point is, it's very powerful. He goes, that statement could not have been more erroneous. Uh, we do spy on you without warrants. Uh, well, of course you do. But, but see, they tried to have him go out and lie to see how it would work. And they went, sir, no one is buying it. Uh, they all know you perjured yourself. Uh, Congress wants to act like they don't know what's going on because they're the real criminals. Uh, acting, oh, I know nothing as well. Oh, gee, I, we know nothing about the $500 billion in narcotics money each year made in the U.S. that's lining most of their pockets. Oh, gee, we don't know why we go to Congress worth a million and, you know, end up being worth 100, 200, 300 million. Gee, uh, we don't know uh, what's going on. Uh, we have no idea. Uh, yeah, there's the headline. Intelligence chief, the head of cybersecurity. Yes, I lied to Congress, but here's why. I lied to you because I love you. <laughs> he says, quote, it was clearly erroneous. So now we found the secret ingredient to eggs erroneous uh, is, is James Clapper. But also Alexander has made similar statements. So uh, there you go. I don't even know what to say anymore. I, I mean, look, listen, this is textbook, wall-to-wall, -wall, insane asylum, looney tune, off the chart, bonker world, cuckoo cocoa puff, crazy, insane tyranny going on. And now they're blowing up people's cars and saying, oh, we've been told by unnamed group to not release the police report. The police at least are going, we've been told not to give the media the police report. National security. Um, they're after me. They're threatening to kill me. Biggest story ever. I'm about to break. I'm going off the radar. I'm going into hiding. Please protect my family. Oh, no, wait. Ah, ah, boom. Oh, there's nothing going on here. Everything's fine here. Nothing Nothing to worry about. I'll, I'll send a squad. Oh, no, uh, no. Actually, a major reactor leak. <laughs> Very dangerous. I mean, I'm laughing about this. This is crazy. But America had so much liberty, there's still this vestigial skeletal structure of freedom 
and institutions that are left, but then you've got massive tyranny just growing like the blob at the end of the Steve McQueen movie, you know, the 1950s version, where it's eaten so many people now, it's the size of, you know, it's the size of the fire station coming down the street. I mean, we've got to turn this around somehow. And again, I run into police and, and, and government people all over the country who are listeners and are aware and who are nice. And I see cops changing people's tires. In fact, I'm going to tell this story now and then go to your calls. In the last month, I had dinner with a family acquaintance over the years, an old family friend. Uh, but when I say acquaintance, we've known him over the years, but off and on. And I had dinner and uh, he said, no, listen, we get basically in trouble when we go out and change tires and help old ladies, you know, carry their trash out and we're on a call. We're, we're not supposed to basically help people. We're supposed to go out and write tickets all day and just be visible uh, out there to the public. And there's so much petty crime going on because criminals won't do home invasions in Austin, Texas. There's so much petty crime going on that there's just nothing we can even do. He goes, the numbers you talk about, it's higher than that. It's just wall-to-wall -wall cars being broken into, bicycles being stolen. But the home invasions aren't up that much because they're scared of guns. And then I was separately talking to a very old family friend, oldest family friends we've got. Uh, and um, one of the, uh, the, the younger brother is a mailman. He's about to retire, but he, he, he's one of the younger siblings in the family we've been friends with since I was born in Dallas. But they live down here now. And he's a mailman in a town outside Austin. He's retiring in two years. By the way, they're already giving him IOUs on their pensions and telling him they're not going to get them. And he's almost been fired three times because he'll go to these shut-ins houses and there's piled up trash. The old woman's in a wheelchair. Her kids won't come see her and help her. Uh, they'll ask, hey, will you please help me carry my trash to the curb? And so they have spies, citizen spies and government spies watching the mailmen and women. And it, it, so now he's sitting there going, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't open that can of peas for you. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't carry the trash out. Even though it takes him five seconds to give her the mail and then carry the trash out the same distance, I can't help you. And he has to wear GPS. They all wear GPS now. And the cops are going to get this too, where they can't be good. See, the government wants to promote the crazy, foaming at the mouth, nutoid kooks. And by the way, where I live is not that bad. The Travis County Sheriff's Department's not that bad. The Austin Police Department isn't that bad uh, compared to the state police who didn't used to be that bad. But I mean, I see the marked difference where you have a some weird checkpoint going on. You park your car, walk up, hey, what's going on? Get in your car and get out of here. You're just wanting to attack me. And I'm like, man, this is really a nut. This is really a dangerous lunatic who shouldn't have a badge, shouldn't have a gun. And the other state police were standing around kind of embarrassed looking at him like, why is he acting like that? But of course, he was the one in command. He was the one in charge. And look, I'm, I'm 5'11". And I don't have a Napoleonic complex. I don't think of myself as really short, but I kind of walk around like a gorilla, kind of bent over half the time now. So people, you know, say, hey, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Professor Grip goes, I like you. You're, you're, you're not too tall. He's a funny guy. He reminded me of Time Bandits where Napoleon's saying, little people, I like you. But um, side issue, you have to see that film to know what I'm talking about. But this guy looked like he was about 5'3", and I guess he had an issue with his uh, Napoleonic shortness like Yosemite Sam and just blew up at me. And, and again, the science, I don't recommend you do this, but I am going to go out soon with a film crew and I'm going to drive by, find a group of cops sitting around talking. I'm going to have the other car drive down a few hundred yards ahead of me, turn around to time it to pull up and park across the street right as I get out and walk over nicely and say, hi, officers, how's it going? With a camera and then go, Mind if I search your vehicle? <laughs> They're going to flip out on me. I, I guarantee you uh, that half the cops out there will probably take me to jail. The other half will say, laugh at me and know who I am. But, but the point is, is that see how we've got the mindset so turned around? If you tried to randomly pull somebody over 50 years ago and say, I'm going to search your vehicle, they'd say, well, this is America, buddy. This ain't Russia. 
But but now it's I'm on to search your vehicle in this video with the two women coming from the beach in Galveston up to Houston, and 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 the male cops are like, I'm on to search your vehicle. They don't even ask. They search it and they go, all right, I'm going to do a cavity search. And these women are in bikinis. And they're like, you're joking. And the cop goes, I ain't joking with you, lady. And I'm telling you, folks, I, I'm telling you, the TSA already does this to little kids. You're not sticking your finger in me. I, I'm just telling you right now. I mean, Jesse Ventura has basically left the country because of them grabbing his hind end. People go, oh, big deal. What's the big deal? If you do that to somebody in a park, you get like five years in prison, and you should. I mean, when you go to the TSA folks, they run their hand up in your butt crack. I hate to talk about this on air, but it's this is this is just you know scientific you know reporting here on what's going on. It's documentary, not meant for purposes of obscenity. You ever notice why on NPR or PBS sometimes they can have cussing and racist stuff on there? Because it's documentary. They're showing you what really happened. It's like if you're watching a trial on court TV. You know, what was said is said. Just like when the defense lawyers for um, O.J. Simpson, you know, were using the N-word. The point is they were documenting what was being said, you know, repeating what had been reported to be said. So, But I'm not even going to get graphic here. The point is... Miss USA, they went in her pants and then into her body. And, and how screwed up is it? These cops looking for marijuana Yeah, and there's the woman like kind of crying and freaking out. We just showed some video of it where she's like, I can't believe that this woman is like handcuffed and then they're going to, imagine a woman's handcuffed and then cops are going to go in her body to see if she shoved a joint inside of herself. That's enough. I can't watch anymore. Just get it off the screen. Yeah, you know, there's the footage of the other women in North Texas, outside Dallas, where the woman, you could see her, the woman cop, the other woman, has the woman bend over and then shoves her hand in her. I mean, this is rape, ladies and gentlemen. But it's a cop doing it, so it's okay. All right, I, I didn't mean to digress off into this. I know I did it yesterday. It's just, it's really starting to flip me out. And it's all color of law. Used to, mind if I search... Man, if you say, sure, go ahead, they're, you're going to be there an hour. It's a violate. Now it's just, I'm going to search, and if you say you don't have a right, they pull a taser out and shoot you. I see this all the time. You've seen it. And if you try to resist being assaulted, imagine if they got your 10-year-old daughter out and did this, and you said, no, you're not. They'll taser you. If you try to defend your daughter, they'll kill you. Your wife tries to defend, she's going to go six feet under. They're going to stick their hand in your hind end. Because that's their power. That's their domination. That's them showing you when it's an indicted, criminal, merciless, offshore banking cartel that ships in the narcotics, runs the sex slavery, runs the, 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 the gambling. They run it all, folks. And the police now, whether they know it or not, work for organized crime that hijacked America. I know what I'm telling you sounds crazy. Doesn't what you know about the Soviet Union sound crazy, but it happened? Nazi Germany sounds crazy. It happened. All the hundreds of dictators you know about, it happened. I'm telling you, this is how it happens when people worship authority and do whatever it says. And I think about how we have this video that I saw get posted yesterday of a Toronto police officer helping a homeless woman. We just posted it on Infowars.com. Nobody's watching it. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to see it. And then when police act like humanitarians, they get in trouble in this country on average. Now, some departments are better. But that's because the system does not want the cops being friends with the people. They do not want a, 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 a good relationship. They want an us against them, militarized police against the general population. We're going to go to break and come back to John and Dominique and Michael and Nick and Peter. Michael wants to talk about Russian troops in America. We're going to get into all of that, and then I'll continue with the news. I haven't even gotten into some of the other insane news. Uh, just briefly, uh, we have the very best water filtration system. I did research for my family. I did research into the very best gravity-fed, portable, but also great in your office or restaurant, wherever. 
gravity fed system that does tens of thousands of gallons before you have to replace the gravity fed filters. It's impregnated with colloidal silver and so much more. Look at the side by side comparisons in InfoWarsStore.com to the competition and annihilate some. We already have the lowest price of ProPure anywhere, but with the promo code uh, WATER, you get 10% off. It is insanely low. And the profit we make from it funds our operation. So InfoWarsStore.com. Really start check making the globalist. Get a high quality filter. Start filtering your deadly tap water. Uh, really stab the new world order right in the gut by taking care of yourself and your family. They so badly want to brain damage you and your family. They so badly want to savage the hell out of you. And it's now time to stand up against it. So win-win, support the broadcast, but more importantly, support your family. Your family deserves it. Pro Pure, promo code WATER. Real easy. Infowarsstore.com. Or you can call us with the promo code WATER. Oh, we're going to filter our water and not eat GMO. Globalist. Ah, ha, ha, ha. 888-253-3139 if you want to call and ask any questions about it for the great InfoWars team where they can uh, take your order with promo code WATER, 10% off. All the other books, videos, t-shirts, magazines, 888-253-3139. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Here's a headline, Sheriff's Office to pay $1 million for inmates' death. And, and the banks love that. They run all these major cities. That'll just put people uh, into deeper bankruptcy to the globalists. It's all fiat money. That's out of Tampa, Florida. It's a mistake at the Orient Road Jail in Hillsborough County. Proved costly $1 million. That's how much the Sheriff's Office and the private company that provides medical care for inmates will pay to the family of 51-year-old Alan Hicks. The popular baseball coach died last year after suffering a stroke and spending 36 hours in the jail without treatment. Oh. Yeah, it is sad, isn't it? That's just some of the news that's up on InfoWars.com. And again, can you imagine if you pulled up behind a cop and shined a spotlight on him and then said, pull over, they'd jump out and probably shoot you. Or, or if, a, if, if, if a gang of 10 citizens came up to a police car and got around them and said, we want to search your vehicle. We think you might have done something. The cop would flip out. How do we put up with that? We're not criminals, but that's what America is now. That's what a tyranny is, where we're all scum and the government's God. I'm going to go to your phone calls, and I'm going to continue right through the next hour with them. Um, and then I'm going to get into heart-eating cannibal demands Obama send weapons. If we don't get help, no fly zone, heavy weapons, we will do worse than I did. You've seen nothing yet and promises to eat more hearts. These are people killing Christians and throwing them off rooftops. This is mainstream news, folks. This is who our government's supporting because our government is cold-blooded offshore banks who know that even if the government gets brought down here, it'll just be the government, they're offshore. They've got diplomatic immunity. That's why things are getting so crazy, because they get away with anything. And if you study criminology, the criminal mindset, whether it's on the street or running a big bank, will always try to get caught and destroy itself and will act out until it's brought down. Let's go to John in Illinois. You want to talk about the police state, which I've kind of been on a jag about the last few days. Go ahead. Alex, uh, I'm a first-time caller, a 10-year listener. Welcome. And thank you. And I wanted to call and basically share a quick story. I had been caught up in an online check scam where I received a rubber check. I had to make a police report about this. And so I called the local police department here in Champaign, Illinois, and I was sitting outside on my porch with my laptop and all the records I needed. This officer pulled up. He sat behind my car for about 20 minutes and ran my plate and everything in full view of me, then finally got out, came up to the car with his hand on his gun, a really big tattooed, you could tell he was ex-military. And he was basically talking down to me before he even asked me what I had called him for. I know, it's ultra, well, you're a Fallujah resident. He was 
basically demanding my ID, and I explained to him my children are inside asleep. I'd rather not. He asked me if there was something I was hiding from him inside. I told him I didn't think my children would appreciate waking up to a six-foot robot with a gun in my living room. And at that, he kind of chuckled, and he eased off. He followed my report. And basically, after he followed the report, at the end, he was saying, if anything on... I didn't hang up on you, John. You, you, yeah, you got somebody me. calling. You want to take that call? Oh, no, thank you. He said, basically, if anybody is offering you anything online as a scam and a sucker is born every day. At this, I brought up how he is losing his pension fund. And he stopped for a moment and said that they have conspiracy theorists in the department like everywhere else. But he would have to look into this. I told him it's all over the Internet. Take a look. Later on that night, I... Yeah. I mean, we're civil with me. Yeah, you want to flip and over and talk to that person real quick? Uh, there's no other call coming in. Oh, okay. But Anyways, I, later on that night. I thanked him for, you know, basically becoming more civil with me. At the next day, he showed up to my wife's job. She's a leasing manager at an apartment with a drunk woman was acting violent. He basically neutralized the situation was very convivial. He was comical. He escorted her back to her house. No, no, we need to engage these police because no one has ever, everyone grovels to them. And if you, if you grovel, it automatically turns them into predators. It's animal psychology. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. <laughs>